The following research and technology is brought to you by the DST Foundation. We would like to thank Gerald Pollack for his profound work with water and for inspiring this annual conference. Evgeny Germanov and the General Conference Sponsor DST Foundation. We also extend our sincere gratitude to the conference speakers and attendees as their research, support, and interest help to make this conference a great success. I will begin with a generalized brief introduction to the IC project and will then hand it to Sergei Kernbach, the DST Fund IC project partner and scientific researcher specializing in measurements and detection of super weak electromagnetic emissions. Here, Sergei will explore transmission of specific field generated by a primary substance over long distances and changing the state of a secondary substance under the influence of specific field. So first, I want to show you a little video that poses a rather interesting question. Okay, the DST Fund Endeavor IC project is set at an intersection of such sciences as physics, chemistry, biology, and medicine. The IC project is dedicated to developing the technology of remote transfer of informational copies, otherwise known as superweak electromagnetic emissions of biologically active substances via communication lines with additional IC transfer to a temporary carrier. Following informational copy transfer procedures, temporary carrier may be used as a source of biologically active super weak electromagnetic emissions for specific effects on water and aqueous systems. This project combines the following natural phenomena. Biological objects emit super weak electromagnetic emissions, also termed as informational copies, IC. With such emission, these signals have an effect on water uh, in other living systems in a characterized manner. Informational copies may be emitted also by non-living systems, for example, chemical compounds. <laughs> Informational copies of chemical compounds have a coherence effect on biosystems, and notably water. Under influence of informational copies, water changes in physical or structural properties and becomes an informational carrier for this emission signal. Informed water has been shown to have effects on biological objects similar to the effects of the substance in which the informational copy was derived. Water, as an informational carrier, retains informational copies and further becomes an informational copy source, carrying with it intrinsic features from the original information source, much like a photograph of a photograph. For nearly 100 years, scientists have been studying phenomena related to emission of biological objects and chemical substances, as well as influence of emissions with different characteristics on living systems, transmitting emissions on water, and other temporary carriers, and distant transfer of emissions. Multiple studies published in peer-reviewed journals explain experimental proof of these phenomena existence. Theoretical studies reveal characteristics and mechanisms of the processes, showing that cells emit EMF, cells react on external EMF, cells interact with EMF. Scientific explorations and various methods of transferring informational copies at a distance by means of informative communicative networks and investigating effectiveness of their impact on biological systems. In 2000, French known immunologist Jacques Benveniste, along with collaborators, reported on PMA leucotite activator biological activity transfer to target cells using electron communication channels. 
PMA was put into a solenoid and connected to a radio amplifier input. A neutrophil suspension was also put into a solenoid and connected to the output of the same amplifier. Neutrophil activation was confirmed by results of 20 blind experiments. The hypothesis was as follows. PMA solution become a source of a certain signal, which may be transmitted via electron communication channels, which are shown to remotely influence neutrophils under the absence of direct chemical contact with cells. Luc Montagnier, recipient of the 2008 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discovery of HIV, used a Benveniste device and established highly diluted DNA solutions of certain pathogenic bacteria and viruses to be sources of electromagnetic irradiation of frequency within several hundred hertz to several kilohertz. As genomic DNA of most pathogenic bacteria contains such segments, it becomes possible to create a highly sensitive detection system for humans and animals with chronic infections. According to this method, a patent application was published in 2012. In 2012, Alberto Folletti and a team of Italian research, researchers published a paper in which the signal transmission was made from the solution of retinoic acid, a well-known agent of differentiation on the medium in which the tumor cells were then placed. As a result, it was found that the prepared medium had a negative effect on malignant cells. Scientists from multiple countries representing various branches of scientists are cooperating to experimentally prove these phenomena exist and have a crucial and practical importance. In service to conventional methods and approaches, the obtained experimental results serve as a basis for existing and developing systems, allowing researchers to implement super weak electromagnetic emissions of informational copies in medicine, agriculture, and veterinary science. Currently, our globing Currently, our growing global network of physicians and researchers have performed more than 5,000 tests in clinical observations. Of the patients treated by informed water remedies, results of conventional studies have shown high efficiency and little or no side effects in comparison with their associated chemical analogs. So now I'm pleased to introduce to you Serge Karnbach, DST Fund IC project partner and scientific researcher specializing in measurements and detection of super weak electromagnetic emissions. And I would like to speak about uh, uh, precise measurements that are behind IC medical technology and a little bit more general and uh, socialization of unconventional technology and this, you know, all this problem when we encounter when we make application of this technology or uh, speaking with our friend about it. Uh, we are uh, uh, friends uh, and partners of, of EST project, but uh, anyway, independent laboratory uh, performed this measurement for, for our customers, uh, different customers. Well, um, I would like to start with this. Uh, you know, Stuttgart is a car city. Uh, it's, uh, we are heavily impacted by, by, by car, uh, Porsche, uh, uh, Daimler, Porsche. You know, I would like to take these uh, uh, pictures from, uh, from the uh, uh, socialization of this technology in the car industry. Additionally, it was a uh, discovery of engine. Uh, it was uh, 80 years before it became uh, a really kind of uh, useful engine. Then uh, there was a slow process of understanding, making models that created a secondary process of product. Uh, improvement of products, uh, it's created a market. And this uh, process of marketing and knowledge uh, lead to further discoveries in this car. And interestingly, there is a whole process uh, that uh, creates a new branch of science and technology, and exactly the whole stuff uh, creates a kind of social acceptance of, of this technology for, for society. But uh, anyway, the key point is still uh, this discovery, because without discovery, there is no acceptance, no technology, no market. And the main points here are is this uh, fiction, is this uh, useful, and it is well reproducible. Now, when we try to, uh, I mean, to transfer this uh, idea to unconventional technologies, um, I mean, uh, I uh, pick up a few points from IC medical technology uh, with an example of, uh, let's say, penicillin. Uh, uh, the point of discovery, well, the penicillin has a kind of chemical structure, I will know. It's an impact of chemistry and then biological organism. But the first point of discovery is a kind of uh, super weak emission uh, behind chemistry. Well, uh, there is a kind of impact of this uh, 
emission and biological and non-biological organism and other many different substances. And uh, there is a long range transfer of big uh, emission. The question is, is this a fiction? Is this, uh, we assume this useful, but the question is, is this a fiction? Can we really reproduce it in many times in independent experiments and in independent laboratories? Um, you know, um, uh, all this research that appeared or was performed in the Soviet Union in the uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s with uh, massive uh, governmental funding. But still, uh, 30 years after this, uh, we, we have this question why this discovery, I mean, the whole discovery, and in particular in the IC medical field, uh, did not emerge as socialization and wide acceptance of this technology in society? I mean, there are many questions this, uh, from the kind of positivistic philosophy of science kind of damaging prehistory we have to, to find uh, to, to find with, with these things. But uh, I mean, uh, I would like to focus here on this discovery stuff and to say that all these three points in, uh, in the technology is a not fiction and is well reproducible. And I start first with the measurement of this uh, weak and super weak emission. I mean, when, when you cannot measure, it, maybe it doesn't exist at all. So measurement is a key point of, of the whole story. And uh, how to measure this? Uh, we work uh, for a long time in this field and uh, with uh, several sensors that we uh, develop over these times. In this case, we use a kind of potentiometry, the pH metry, uh, quite standard approach. Uh, we use the standard electrodes, uh, but uh, there are two differences. Um, as a, first of all, we use a quite high resolution. It's about uh, 10 of power minus uh, 5 minus 6 as uh, the highest resolution. And secondly, you have to uh, uh, thermostabilize uh, your probe uh, to prevent the uh, impact of electromagnetic field, uh, mechanical impact of everything. Uh, you have to protect almost from everything here. Uh, and there's uh, this uh, towers, protection towers. And then uh, there's a kind of uh, example of measurement what, what, what we do. Uh, uh, we start uh, measurement for uh, several hours. Uh, for background measurement. And in the background measurement, we receive a kind of signal, a little bit of uh, noise, uh, some small changes of, of, of signal. It depends, uh, uh, generally, the weak emission is impacted by, by many factors. And then uh, it was uh, quite inspired from IC Medicals. We take this uh, CD and then put CD under uh, the measurement device and uh, perform measurement also for several hours. And uh, in this measurement, uh, uh, again, uh, we have to remove all people from the laboratory. You know, it is very uh, uh, sensitive to almost uh, all these different impacts. But after this, you see uh, there is a change of pH. So there is very, very small p uh, changes. Uh, like I said, it's a difference as a range between um, 10 of power minus 3 up to 10 of power minus 5. But nevertheless, it's uh, well, uh, well visible changes. Um, uh, just uh, take a look at uh, this uh, back side of uh, this, uh, this uh, thermostabilization tower. It's a metal sheet, it's a, it's a two metal sheets, the vacuum inside. I mean, it's, it's uh, quite protected from all possible kinds of electromagnetic emission, from uh, thermal impact and so on. I mean, uh, there is no electromagnetic qualities of impacting this object and, and uh, water, or, or, uh, water samples. Uh, we perform measurements, uh, uh, that was uh, kind of, of examples of this uh, device. It's a biological office, we just uh, take a green leaf and put it uh, up on, on uh, this device. And you see each time when we insert it and remove it, uh, we observe a change of, uh, of trend, of pH trend. Um, uh, there was a number of papers what we published in this technology. This last paper this uh, appeared right now in iTunes. Uh, for this, we took uh, 88 measurements. Um, all this measurement that was very similar. Uh, there's a kind of background uh, measurement, it's almost a line, and then you observe a kind of impact. Well, um, uh, in uh, uh, results, uh, we receive a positive result about 92% uh, of, of repetition. When we just only account inserting CD in the device, it was about 93%. And with a green leaf, uh, about 75%. I mean, it's a kind of uh, quite a good repetition with a great statistic on this. Um, well, the next idea was uh, fine. Now we can measure more as a kind of weak impact, uh, which we cannot count to electromagnetic or thermal or mechanical emission. But what's about this uh, activation of water? I mean, uh, exerting to different electromagnetic fields. 
But we consider two uh, different approaches or two, two different cases. As in this uh, case, we use a differential approach. We use always two samples. And in the first uh, case, we uh, exposed uh, both samples to, to equal electromagnetic field or, for instance, to not expose it at all. So we have a kind of uh, equally activated samples. And in the second case, uh, we, at least in, in all of these times, we used uh, very, very different approaches for activation. For instance, activation is a kind of uh, geometrical shape, as a well-known uh, effect, uh, with laser, uh, with different uh, electromagnetic uh, system, uh, this is a kind of uh, LED. Um, here inside of uh, conus, you can put different uh, ins or substances and so activated in this way. Interesting is the result. Uh, when we uh, observe this uh, with a DPH uh, device, uh, when we uh, consider equally activated uh, samples, uh, in both uh, cases, I mean, you observe uh, almost equal cars and almost equal uh, 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 behavior after the impact. But uh, when you uh, consider uh, unequally activated samples, you immediately see uh, different behaviors and channels. And in this case, for instance, with very specific activation, uh, we observe a kind of 10 time uh, difference. Uh, in this way, we can measure not only impact, uh, but we can measure a kind of, of numbers that are behind this impact. We can say whether this activation is more intensive or less intensive, or more useful or less useful. Uh, we, we try here uh, to find a kind of good combination of different fields uh, with, uh, with the highest impact. Um, well, um, statistics on this, uh, we uh, performed for IC Medical last year. This measurement that was present in this conference. It was about 40 measurements. Um, uh, beginning of this year, it was uh, repeated with 70 measurement, and currently we, we do this with cosmetic products, about 30 measurement, but we are just in progress, it will be much more. Um, uh, in, uh, and the common picture is more or less like we said last year. Uh, when there is no impact or equal impact, we observe uh, quite low difference, but when there is any impact, you observe uh, dramatic, uh, dramatic difference in the difference between activated and not activated channel. So in this case, uh, we clearly see that uh, we are able to uh, measure kind of uh, emission from different objects as well as repeatable, and uh, we can accumulate a large statistic uh, of this phenomenon. Uh, what is about long, the second point, long range transfer of weak emission? Um, well, uh, I should say that uh, the, uh, the whole story uh, regarding this long range transmission is from, from communication, as a non electromagnetic communication. And this was explored in Soviet Union uh, for the submarine communication, military fields, or it's a quite uh, well, uh, I mean, in those times it was quite well researched. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really good published, but I mean, we, we tried to, I mean, many people tried to, to recover this technology. So uh, it's a, a typical uh, communication where you have sensor on one side and the emitter on the other side, and when you uh, switch on emitter, you receive some signal by sensors. In, in this case, uh, we use many different sensors. In this case, there's a contact uh, conductometric approach. Uh, you, you, you measure current through water, but it's a very specific way. As a first of all, it's a DC conductometry, and you, you need a uh, deeply polarized electrode, electric layers, and you have, again, to stabilize samples, uh, again, temperature, electromagnetic fields, and all, all possible, all other possible things. Well, uh, for um, uh, emitters, uh, use again uh, different emitters, this was uh, LEDs, but uh, this specific kind of LEDs with high voltages. Uh, laser emitter, uh, electromagnetic emitter, a combination of electric and magnetic fields. Uh, this is uh, an uh, electromagnetic emitter with specific geometry, the generating uh, pointing vector. Well, uh, what this was uh, a setup. Um, uh, there was one of the uh, uh, earliest set up in 2013. Uh, we have a kind of uh, metal uh, uh, box in the laboratory. We put a generator here, then remove generator uh, over the walls. Uh, water, water, water. It's a small video. Here are the sensors. And you see there's a thick uh, concrete walls. Uh, it's in our basement in the, the university. And uh, thick uh, metal doors. I mean, all this idea about electromagnetic impact or kind of electromagnetic connection between uh, receiver and emitter, I mean, it's in a way, uh, I think. Uh, that was one of the uh, first uh, LED emitters. Uh, so from batteries. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, what was the behavior? Uh, we uh, do like, uh, I mean, in normal way, uh, uh, record the ground measurements, and then uh, this uh, gray uh, line is uh, the impact. Uh, the generator was switched on, and you see in uh, all cases almost the same thing. So it's a kind of uh, line and the uh, ground measurement and change in the trend and the impact time. Um, uh, there's uh, many different uh, repetitions of the same, for instance, two times switch on, switch off, I mean, it's uh, almost the same things. Well, they, we published it uh, in uh, 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 GSE, it was uh, 233 repetitions of the same uh, experiments, I mean, it's, it's very simple to, to repeat it many times, or we've we done it. Um, the um, uh, success rate about 81%, uh, so it's quite high for, for more than 200 uh, experiments. Um, after this, uh, there was an uh, extension of this experiment, we started to use uh, long-range uh, signal transmissions uh, between Stuttgart and Kishinev, Stuttgart, Moscow, Stuttgart, Tomsk, Stuttgart, Perth, Stuttgart, New York, Perth, New York, I mean, uh, one of the longest what we had about uh, 30,000 kilometers. Uh, with the same setup or less, we uh, generated, we had sensors. Uh, uh, in this experiment, there was uh, 670 uh, repetition of more or less the same thing, uh, published uh, in, uh, I think, four or five different papers. And uh, I would like to, to point on this, uh, this um, 30,000 kilometers and uh, power of emitter is 1 milliwatt. I mean, 1 milliwatt for 30,000 kilometers. Uh, and uh, there was a night time, we were sleeping. And uh, when we come in the morning and take a look at the data, we, we see immediately after the beginning of impact, you have to jump, jump in the sensor wireless. One milliwatt. <laughs> um, well, this um, uh, absolutely nice experiment. This was proposed by uh, Professor Maslaprod from, from Kishinev, his Academy of Science. This overcooled water um, uh, is uh, minus 25 degree for almost one day. And this is a generator, and there's a link to uh, four samples, and there's a link to sample number two. And the idea was that, uh, I mean, this uh, overcooled water is extremely sensitive to, to impacts. And uh, the distance is 10 meters, it's again no, no way of electromagnetic impact. Uh, Oops. Just froze uh, immediately after uh, something like 10 minutes of impact, and it froze the sample. Uh, in the video, there is recording more than, than, I think, two hours and no other samples froze. I mean, this really demonstrates how this impact of this weak emission over the distances. Um, well, uh, then the second point, at least in, in the technology, what, what we, we measured, and not only in, in uh, this specific case, but in more uh, in, in different cases, what, what we had. Uh, this is well repeatable, and when we consider all this, I mean, the military things, what they, they've done, it's, it's a statistic, is huge, it's normal, it's huge. Well, now, as the last point, impact of a weak emission on a biological atmosphere, whether it's cities or... Um, it's a simple thing, but I think uh, everybody can, can repeat uh, uh, the, the uh, pipe, and you can pump water through, through this pipe as a kind of, of, of coil. And uh, we put two uh, plants uh, on the side of the coils, and they die after I mean, two or three weeks, as this depends. You can, uh, I mean, uh, repeat it at home, it's not really advisable to do it at home. It's uh, quite a pathogenic emission, but it's the simplest example how this uh, non-electromagnetic weak emission uh, can impact biological organisms. In, in this term, this is negative impact. Um, we use a standard approach, at least for measuring these things, uh, with uh, uh, microbiological measurements, uh, first yeast. And the idea is uh, that the activity of yeast uh, or metabolism is impacted by this stimulating or inhibiting emissions. And they produce CO2 and we measure pressure. And it's uh, very simple to do this. And at the end of the day, you will receive something like a car with, uh, with lowest pressure and with highest pressure, and you can very easily differentiate whether this uh, impact was stimulating or inhibiting, and you can count, okay, what is the intensity of this uh, inhibiting or uh, stimulating uh, 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 emission. Um, I would like to uh, go a little bit more in detail in other kind of experiments we performed uh, with uh, Kishinev, um, this was Institute of uh, Plant uh, Physiology and Genetics. Uh, we worked almost one year in these experiments. There was uh, 60 different types of experiments. Uh, the distance between our city is uh, one and a half thousand kilometers. Uh, we performed over uh, 50 attempts, uh, and they specialized in, in plants. In this case, it was uh, zits, as a different subtypes with zits. 
and uh, because of large number of seats, as a great statistic of all of them, uh, use the three different uh, setups. And uh, I mean, in all of this setup, we observe a kind of increasing of experimental population when we do a stimulation impact. Uh, increasing over the uh, control population. The difference was between 20% and 50% in almost all cases. So this also published uh, last year in two papers. And I think uh, in uh, those experiments, uh, we first time uh, perform a distant impact of, of pathogenics and, and stimulators and, and real conditions. And uh, I mean, um, we somehow repeat the more oldest results from 80s. Uh, where people uh, tried to explore uh, remote impact of different substances and biological organisms. Um, they was again published. Um, uh, we uh, do uh, right now this uh, with uh, different uh, farms in, in France and in Germany. I think it is a good example how this technology goes not from scientific side but from application side. And this creates a kind of social pressure for acceptance of this technology. Uh, well. Um, this last example from this, um, from this uh, long-range impact, uh, this was done by Professor Maslabrot the first time. Uh, he published the uh, 2004 first time, he then repeated a few times. The idea was then uh, when there is a set of uh, jointly sweet seeds, I mean, that could be from one plant, or but it should be kind of common factor behind all of them, and he divided this in two parts and uh, uh, set the gamma radiation as the third part. And the uh, cytology laboratory performed a uh, measurement of uh, chromosome dysfunction, of course, as uh, encounter uh, many uh, dysfunction. But uh, strange was they, uh, the distance between both was about seven kilometers. And when they uh, investigate the second part, they also discovered chromosome dysfunction. This absolutely amazing fact that, uh, I mean, the main implication, one of the applications should be quite careful with what we are doing in a remote way because we can quite easily uh, distort uh, DNA material from a biological samples in this way. So, um, when I try to conclude now uh, in uh, regard to asymmetrical technology, I mean, uh, back to the scheme, at least in all of these points, and in more larger, I mean, uh, many different points of this uh, unconventional technology, we can say it's not a fiction. It's useful, it's not a fiction, and we are able to measure this in a statistically significant manner. Of course, the question is now what, how to proceed further. Should we publish it? Should we go more in application field? I mean, it's, it's quite an unknown question for, for us. When I, uh, I mean, try to uh, formalize these things, I think, uh, that's what uh, was uh, said before here, that uh, using standard physical measurements is quite successful. And uh, we can uh, do a lot of repeatable measurement and with uh, high significance. But we should not forget that it's not like measuring a voltage. It's a, it's a dramatic difference uh, because this weak emission is very sensitive to almost everything. Uh, to astronomic events, to natural rhythm, to psych uh, psychical effect of operator. We have many measurements when the human entering in the building, not in the, in the measurement room, but in the building, that we cannot measure anymore. So it's, it's quite of, of, of very strong uh, impact of all these additional factors. <laughs> of course, uh, some, some ethical uh, about uh, this uh, military misuse, I mean, that uh, should be somehow also taken into account. And uh, uh, explanation, I mean, the very, very, very important point, how to explain everything. Because without explanation, we cannot really work successfully in this field. At least what we, we trained is uh, more than uh, quantum effects and microscopic systems. It's, it seems uh, more and more people uh, I mean, publishing in this field. It's a paper from uh, Vidal and Nature. There's a paper in Science. And there's uh, uh, many papers appearing now in different journals on this field. At least uh, I personally believe this may be kind of, of explanation that we can use in part of the world. Okay, thank you very much.